So recently I found all the raw footage of the bug restoration. And then I had this crazy idea that uh, I was gonna re-edit the entire documentary on a 90s computer. <laughs> That's just not gonna work out. Uh, technically, it's just gonna take too long. And then even if I was able to re-edit the whole documentary, the quality is just gonna look like crap. We have a Macintosh Performa from 94 or 95, I can't exactly remember. But uh, in the back, it's got the RCA connections, so you could connect anything. I'm, you know, when me and my brother were younger, we used to connect our Nintendo 64 to our computer, and that was our TV in our room. You know, we could, as a matter of fact, you can actually connect this thing to cable TV still, if you really wanted to, but the resolution isn't that great. I started importing my first tape and uh, I got about 30 minutes into the first tape and uh, I was running out of memory. I was running out of 900 megabytes because that's all I had to work with. <laughs> so I stopped the record and when you stop recording it actually tries to compress the video down, you know, from 900 megs to maybe like 100 megs. And as a matter of fact, my computer didn't even have enough memory to compress the video. I ran out of like, I'm guessing RAM. <laughs> so I had to re-import that a whole different way. It just dawned on me that uh, old editing software can't do time-lapse videos. So I was like, well, I'll just fast forward through the tape. <laughs> so I... My time lapse was me fast forwarding through the tape. <laughs> this is really goofy. That's the only way that I could get an hour of footage on this old Mac. Because I'll be honest with you, most of the footage on this first tape, it was just time lapse video. That's literally all it was. Well, I used to have the Avid Video Shop CD, but uh, when I moved into my house, I threw away a bunch of shit pretty sure I accidentally threw away that CD but don't you worry there is a site that's called Macintosh Garden now this site has practically everything you could think of for classic Macintoshes every program every game everything because today most of those most of that software is considered abandoned wear abandoned wear meaning their copyrights have expired or the company no longer exists Basically, it's just everything's free now. So if you do have a classic Mac and stuff, I'm going to teach you how you can take those files from a modern computer and make them work on a classic Mac because I figured that out. And I always wanted to make a video of this. I just didn't really have a reason to make one until now. When you unzip the downloaded file, it'll come in as a uh, ISO disk image. You want to open that up. From there, you want to take those files, burn them on a CD, take the CD to a uh, iMac Blueberry, and then from there, take those files from the disk, put them on a zip drive, and then take that zip drive and put it in your classic Mac, and the file should just work like brand new. Um, that's how you take files from Macintosh Garden on a modern computer and get them working on a classic Mac. I wasted <laughs> wasted months trying to figure that shit out. Jesus, there's a reason why I don't have a girlfriend. For the 90s, it's a really good editing software. I mean, I, I'm still impressed with it today when I try to edit with it. Uh, you know, I, I edited maybe about 15 minutes of video into like a little minute clip and uh, very simple, you know, you just, you basically, you open up the video file and that's like your preview monitor and then you set your ins and outs on the video clip and then you drop it down on the timeline, just basically just like modern editing, no different than like, I'd say Adobe. Transitions are a little weird, you have to actually select the crack.
there, there are effects. I don't really dibble dabble too much in the effects because it just takes forever and you constantly run out of memory, which is kind of funny. Only problem with video back in the 90s though is the, uh, the resolution was so small. I mean, you're talking, as you can see, the resolution is like this big. So when you blow it up onto a big TV, oh dude, it looks like it's pixelated. This was back in the times where if you wanted to truly export your video, you had to export, you had to record it on a VHS tape. If you really wanted to be baller, you get one of those orange Nickelodeon VH te VHS tapes and record over the fucking Rugrats and then you got a fucking <laughs> orange VHS tape with your shitty video on it. I don't know. I just <laughs> I just saw that. That that'd be funny. Um, <laughs> but this little project sparked a whole new project, man. I'm going to I'm going to reimport all 17 hours of raw footage from the bug restoration. And uh, we'll see, we'll see uh, what we get.